I was teaching, started teaching part time and I moved full time and kind of the rest is history. I have an active research lab. Um, the bulk of that activity right now is happening off campus, uh, but um, this semester and into next semester I'll be moving some of the lab research on campus. A lot of students uh, doing research in the lab. I'm totally full right now, so I know a lot of times students are like, oh, you just put a plug in for his lab and a bunch of people volunteer. We're actually full, okay? So if you're looking for research opportunities, I'd be happy to try to help find them for you or let you know other faculty you can talk to uh, other than myself because there's a lot of cool research going on on campus. There's a brand new Center for Bioengineering Innovation that's um, been set up this past year. And uh, as a part of that, I've gotten to know a lot more faculty that are doing the type of research that I do. So what is the research that I do? Well, it's kind of making replacement body parts. So mostly we focus in the cardiovascular area and in skin or wound healing. And we focus on trying to repair wounds, uh, trying to do it faster, quicker, better, uh, trying to get scarless wound healing if we can. And we actually make replacement skin in the lab from scratch. Um, we also I have a big cardiovascular background, making stent grafts and vascular grafts and things like that. So we're a, a regenerative medicine and a bioengineering lab uh, located off campus as well as on campus. So if I'm not here on campus, I'm probably nerding out in the lab. Okay? <laughs> so email is going to be the best way to reach me. How many of you guys saw the syllabus on the BB Learn show? So three of you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> We're going to go over that. We're going to go over a lot of introductory stuff in the beginning of this lecture. So first off, what is it that I need for Bio 201? Well, the seventh edition is shown up top, and the sixth edition is shown down here. Either one of these texts will be fine. This one you can probably find used on Amazon or eBay or somewhere else, and that'll be just fine. This is what the cover's going to look like. This one you'll find uh, brand new, super expensive in the bookstore. It'll totally work. It's the one that we ordered. Okay? But I'm going to talk about some other options. And a lot of emails from students about the required text. You actually do need a textbook. Amazingly as that sounds, but you're, you're going to have to have access to a textbook. We actually have online assignments, and those online assignments are going to be due periodically throughout the semester. In fact, the first two are already posted. You can start them right now if you wanted to, or after class. The first one's due on the 10th of September by 11.59 p.m., and the second one, which is the quiz, is due the next day, September 11th, by 11.59 p.m. Okay, we'll talk more about that Thursday because I imagine nobody's actually started that. So, walking through what you need, you're going to want to go to lab this week. It started this week, so there's four sections of lab that already met today. So if you were supposed to have lab this morning and you didn't go, you better contact your instructor your lab, otherwise you run the risk of being dropped because there are people wanting to get into that lab. Okay? You want to wear closed-toed shoes, you're going to need to get the lab manual. Really, the only place to get the lab manual this semester is in the bookstore because it's brand new. We just redid it. Okay? And the good news is it's actually far less expensive than it used to be, and there's a bunch of stuff that we never covered in the old one that we took out. Okay, we, we took out all that stuff. You're not buying stuff that you're not going to use. And then there's a histology DVD that your instructor will talk about in the lab. Um, I would encourage you to get this. It's not required, but there's a lot of histology in laboratory, and you're going to see that. But the iPads in the lab classroom are loaded with the histology. Um, there's glass microscope slides that are there. But the value of having the DVD is you can actually study it at home. Okay, this is what it looks like. It's on. It, it's in the bookstore. Okay, um, but again, uh, you don't absolutely have to have it. It's probably going to be um, a well-used ancillary piece of material if you decide to go for it. You can load it on your device, your phone, your tablet, your iPad, uh, if you so choose. For lecture, you're getting the sixth or the seventh edition. There's not a whole lot of difference between the two. Some of the figures are a little bit updated and newer. 
but either will do because these are open book, open notes, quizzes, and worksheets, and so you'd be handicapped if you didn't actually have a textbook. You, know, you don't want to look up the answer. The connect axis is extremely important. So the textbook in the bookstore, the connect code with the textbook is a whopping $219.50. But it's a two-semester textbook. You would use the code and the textbook for this and 202. So you're kind of making an investment now for the future. You know, if you if you look at it, it's you know 100 and you know less than 110 dollars per semester for the textbook material. But you're buying it ahead of time. The code only. If you went to Amazon and got a textbook, or you borrowed a roommate's, or you got it from a friend, uh, the code only in the bookstore is 163.75. Now, you can buy the code, and I'm going to show you how to do that today online, directly from the publisher, and it's only 120. So that saves you like $43. 20 of which you can give to me, and then you can pocket the other two. That would be awesome, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. Is the code online for the The code is for both semesters, but the code is actually a 7th edition code. So beware if you're buying the textbook online and you go, oh, I got a great sixth edition textbook that comes with the code. The code isn't going to work for our class because it, it uses the seventh edition code. Does that make sense? Did I give you enough options that I've thoroughly confused you? Okay, sweet. That was the plan. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go over it. Yeah, I'm going to go over it. The question was about the registration URL. I'm going to show it to you. It's actually in this lecture. You will find all the lectures online, okay? And I'll show you where to find them. But all these lectures, these slides are all available. Now, every now and then I'll make an update and something cool happens in the news, okay? And I nerd out and I decide to make a new slide and then I'll, I'll post a new version of it. But for the most part, the lectures are already there, okay? So you can plan ahead. Okay, so that give you an idea of, does that answer all the questions on textbook, Yes. So if we bought a brand new 6th edition that came with the Connect access code, it won't work? It won't work. The 6th edition code will not work for this class because it's based off the 7th edition. Okay? So what would you do if we already bought the 6th edition? I would try to take it back. Where did you buy it? Yeah. Okay. Um, you can check their return policy. You, what'd you buy? The whole brand new one? No. Used book and it came with a code? No. You bought the used 6th edition? Textbook? You're fine. But I don't have a connect code. You're going to have to buy a connect code. You can buy a 7th edition connect code for $120 through the publisher. I'll show you how to do that. Yes. This is for quizzes and worksheets. Okay. All right, other questions? Come see me after class or in office hours, all right? We gotta move on, okay? Some optional items, three by five note cards, colored pencils and markers. These are things that some students have found successful in this class. And more importantly than anything is gonna be, make sure you have enough time to study. How many of you guys have a full-time job? How many of you guys are working, part keep your hands up. How many of you guys are working part-time? Part-time, full-time job. How many, keep your hands up, are taking more than 15 hours a semester? Okay, keep your hands up. How many of you guys have a dog? And keep your hands up, everybody's hands up. <laughs> or a cat, or an organism that depends on you, like child would count. <laughs> okay. All right, everybody, if I call on you, raise your hand. Now look around the room, everybody, everybody raise your hand that was in that category, look around the room. This is the generation of overcommitted, Students. So then, right? This is actually for you guys to think about. I really want you guys to think hard about maybe getting that kid up for adoption or <laughs> the dog. The dog for adoption. Whoops. Alright, so you asked about the URL. Here's the URL. This is in the lecture. Okay, I will post it on BB Learn. And it'll push to your device if it's set up, probably this evening. But you'll find this URL um, 
embedded in this lecture that's on, uh, on PB Learn. So if you, to answer this gentleman's question up front, and maybe it'll get to some of your other questions, I don't, you know, how do I do this? If you click on your, this URL, it's going to take you to a page that looks essentially like this. Okay, and if you don't have a registration, you're going to click over here on register now. And this is what I've found is be the least expensive way to actually buy Connect. It's 160 bucks per semester, but you have to pay for it up front. Okay, so $120 that you get both semesters. And then you enter your email address that you register, you hit submit, and if you have a registration code, and you've already torn open your sixth edition book, and you don't think it's, I would try to return it, but if it's not returnable, I would just try the code here, but I don't think it's going to work. Okay? But let's, you might as well try it. And then if that fails, come see me and we'll maybe try to come up with another option. Okay? Here you can do one of three things. You can submit your code that you get in the bookstore, or <clears throat> if you uh, bought it in another source, but it's a seventh edition code. And if you don't have a code, you can buy it online right here. Or you can start what we call courtesy access. This will give you, I think it's two, it's possibly three, but I think it's only two weeks of free access. You can get in there, you can do the assignments, right? You can take a screen capture to prove to mom and dad you actually do need $120 more. Say, hey, my free access expires. But this will get you started for the next two weeks so you're not behind. Okay, so you click on start courtesy access. I went ahead and clicked buy online, I think is the next, yeah, here's the next one. And here is what it says, seventh edition at 7E. Um, the access will expire uh, next year, gives you a whole year, so you get two semesters in. So if you skip next semester's 202, you theoretically could still take it in summer, right, summer session, and still use the same code. You catch that? Summer session two actually ends like the beginning of August, so you're fine. So you at least get two semesters worth. Uh, and you can see it's populating here, so this is the $120. And then you hit continue. I don't know what the next screen is, because I didn't go that far, but I bet it's going to be enter your visa number, et cetera, et cetera. Does that answer your question on the access URL? Question in the back. The courtesy access comes with like everything. And then this one is just for um, uh, the connect code. And then I think you have some additional options if you wanted to, you know, add, you know, cruise control and, you know, if you want to add heated seats and all that, you can probably put that in next. Okay? All right. Questions over connect. Does that answer the other question on what, what, what do we buy that? What's it for? Well, you're going to see it here in a second as to what it's for. So let's talk about the syllabus. All right. So here's our syllabus, and I'll show you next after this how you're going to download um, information off of BB Learn. So the best way to reach me is actually going to be email. Now, this is my big lecture. I have a smaller lecture that meets tomorrow. And there's only 110 students in that one. But between the two, there's 510 of you. So have a little grace with me on email. I may not get back to you within the first 30 seconds that you get sent. OK? Like, <laughs> um, so you know, give me a day or two. And if, if I miss it, it's not because I don't like you. I'm singling you out. You know, I'm sitting in the second row. So <laughs> you know, right? Just give me a little time to, to respond, but this will be the best way. Now, there are some alternatives here. Uh, you can leave a phone message that will probably never get answered. Um, <laughs> so that's, that's not true, but that's uh, not the best way to reach me because I'm hardly ever sitting in my office. Okay, but the phone message is actually do dump to my email. Uh, but again, if you leave me a phone message, maybe leave me your email because I would prefer to email you back. It's a little bit easier for me. Uh, also, it helps me keep track of what we talked about last, right? Because there's probably like seven mics in here and like 12 gens, okay? So if you're Jen and I don't remember the conversation, 
you know, I can look at the email train and I can say, oh yeah, we were talking about how she was sick and how she had to go back to, you know, Missouri for a funeral and she missed the lecture and she wanted to get a copy of the notes, and, right? So it'll help me remember what's going on. Uh, three units. Um, the required text is the sixth or seventh edition. This is, I didn't build the online connect platform, okay? So when we have issues with it, a lot of it I can't solve. But the help desk is amazingly helpful, believe it or not. I, I, I know, you're like, oh yeah, right, I'm going to be on hold forever. It actually works really well. I actually do call it, and I will get some live person, okay, on a regular basis, and they're actually fairly knowledgeable. So I will, don't think it's a blow off and say, you know, my connect's not working, and I refer you to this 800 number that's on your syllabus. Try giving them a call. The other one is if you're having trouble with BB Learn, Email the help desk at our institution. They're also extremely responsible and re responsive and responsible, very responsible people, but responsive, okay? Um, all the lectures I record, and I do this for a couple of reasons. Number one is it gives you guys a great study tool. So I may not post the lecture. Obviously, I can't post it before lecture because I have to record the lecture. Okay? I actually had that question once. Could you post the, the video recordings before lecture? It's like, if I could, sweetheart, <laughs> I wouldn't be here. <laughs> I'd be doing something else, okay? Um, I actually have to finish the lecture before I can post it, okay? Um, and, and a lot of times it'll happen that evening or maybe the next day, but it'll definitely happen well before the exam. And then you can go back through the lecture. If your notes, like, you're, you're taking notes, which I strongly encourage, and then it, like, tails off into, like, a line, you fell asleep. Uh, you can go back to that segment of lecture and figure out, okay, what do I need to fill in the blanks about? So that's the main reason. The second reason is um, I've been teaching this class for a while. And so I don't know, have you ever run into the situation where um, you ask the professor, you know, on the exam, there was this question about um, organic molecules that you use for uh, anti cholesterol lowering. Uh, strategies. We didn't cover that. And, and the professor's answer is, of course we did. I remember it. And you're like, you know, like 12 of you are all, I'm pretty sure you didn't talk about that. Nothing in my notes. And so it's like you against them. Is anybody, I found myself in college in those situations of super frustrated. Okay, and it was slightly before iPads. So uh, there weren't any recordings of the lecture to actually prove it. Um, so I go ahead and do that myself because when I build the exams, I only write my exams from my lecture material. Okay, so um, because I write the exams from my lecture material, it's important for me to be able to look back and remember what did I actually lecture on. Okay, some of you are hoping that I wouldn't plug this in because then that means maybe we'll get out early. <laughs> Too bad. All right, so the lectures are actually recorded, so you can go back and use it as a study tool. If you're going to be gone, it's another resource for you. Now, the challenge is, and we'll talk about this as we go through, we're going to have some bonus opportunities in class. It will actually be of value to be here. You know, well, if, I, if you do the lectures, why can't I just watch the lectures? Well, you're not going to be able to do the bonus activities. Okay? I think there's something important about the face-to-face -face lecture. And we'll talk a little bit about that as far as the strategy of this class here in a moment. So here's our resources. Bad news is we have like 400 students in here, almost, just shy. The good news is you, we get a lot of resources as a result of it. And so you essentially have four instructors. Okay, so I'm gonna have our uh, SIs stand up here, okay? Uh, and introduce them real quickly. So we have Tracy over here on your right, and we have Maddie in the middle, and we have Jordan on your on your left. And Tracy, uh, actually all three of them have actually taken this course um, rather recently. And um, what was that six times? You're supposed to, that's not supposed to be a value statement. <laughs> Uh, you know, you've been doing this for six times, right? Um, not necessarily as a student, but as like a support person. Okay, some of you are like, oh, not going to Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on down the line. Um, they're all very, very quality students.
students from this class, they understand this class. Not only that, they've taken it from me, and they understand my style. They, uh, Tracy is new at si for me, but both Maddie and Jordan have si for me in the past. And so they understand like how I write my test questions, which sometimes it's not just enough to know the material, it's also understanding, you know, how's he going to ask the question? Or what's he going to focus on? So these folks can actually help guide you on maybe what I'm thinking and what I would value as being important for you to focus on and study. So that's insight into the way the questions on the exam might pop up. Okay? Let's give them a round of applause. Their contact information is shown here as well for Maddie, uh, for Tracy, and for Jordan. And um, importantly, do a poll. When's that going to happen? So tonight we're going to do a doodle poll, and you'll probably get it on BB Learn. And it is impossible, you remember the exercise of you raising your hands, you know, who's overcommitted and has no time for this class? Do you guys want to do that activity again, or do you remember <laughs> approximately the, you know, 95% of the hands that went up? So based on that schedule of yours, we're not going to be able to satisfy everybody's calendar. There is no way that's going to happen. So we're going to do a doodle poll, and we're going to try to go with the time slots that work the best. But given the fact that we have essentially three SIs for the entire semester, um, we will probably have SI times almost every day of the week, or the work week. Okay? And then things will happen on the weekends prior to the exams. So if you can't make, you know, if you've ever had a class, you're like, why well, can't never go to the SI because I always have class? Well, there probably will be an SI time that you could move things around, okay? Because they'll probably be happening five days a week. And so then if your answer to me is, Dr. Keller, I can't make any of the SI times, and I look at it and there's like 22 hours of SI times, I'm going to probably tell you, I think you need to evaluate priorities. Because it's not like we don't have a lot of options for you, okay? And if you have to talk to your boss and say, you know what? I really have a tough class, and I need a little bit of time to make this one-hour SI session every week. Um, can I pick this slot because that's when we're least busy, or when you know John can cover for me? It gives you the ability to have those negotiating conversations, which is important for you in your adult life. Okay. All right. So here's our schedule. Um, it's already pre-planned. This, the way to read this is that stands for week of. Okay? I, 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 you guys think I'm making, making jokes, but I'm actually really not funny at all. Um, these are questions that students ask, like, what is WK? <laughs> you don't text much, do you? Um, that's like old people texting for a week. Okay? So, we go, that's the Monday. So yesterday was the 31st. And then the next column, the way you read that is, this is actually not um, cryptic. This is actually spelled out for you. That actually stands for Tuesday. <laughs> okay. And again, equally non-cryptic is this one that says Thursday, which means Thursday. So you can see where we're going to be throughout the entire semester. Okay. Now, depending upon how many questions get asked and how diplomatically I'm able to move on, you understand what that means? Um, we may get a little behind, and we probably won't ever be super ahead. Um, and so, but we'll probably make it up in the next class period. And the goal is, by that exam, you can see the first exam is going to be the week of September 14th, which is actually the day of Tuesday, September 15th is our first exam. Okay, so that's like two weeks away. And... <clears throat> There are a couple of slots during the semester where I'm actually going to be gone, and they're already highlighted there. And this is one of those times where I will be able to host the video lecture without even being here, because I have a library of lectures from previous semesters, and so I'll pick one that makes the most sense. Okay? And so you don't think that this is uh, 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 me just blowing you guys off. That, uh, that first one is an out-of-town trip. Uh, with the family, and um, then the other one is a conference, okay? So, 
Uh, those are the only times I plan to be away, unless something monstrous shows up. Okay? Um, you can see the schedule plays out. Um, Thanksgiving week, down here. Um, obviously, there's no class on Thursday. We're going to have an exam the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Uh, so if you have travel plans, make them for when, you know, after this class, Tuesday evening or Wednesday. Um, you can also see where our final exam is scheduled based upon the final exam calendar for the university. So um, if you want to, I would look at your other final exams and make sure you don't have a conflict. But they try, as long as the professor is organizing the finals based upon the final exam schedule for the university, it's very unusual to have a conflict. If they move outside of that, then we might run into a problem. And then it, it might be a, you know, my class is bigger than your class, so you have to move here, right? Which is probably the case. You know, we probably out, outnumber most of the other classes on campus. But we can figure something out if you have truly a conflict on your final exam. But here are not standard conflicts. Um, my parents already scheduled my flight to come home on December 16th. I was like, well, maybe you should talk to your parents before they schedule the flight. Or here's an idea. Why don't you schedule your own flight? <laughs> okay? So I'm trying to share with you kind of some of the things that do end up popping up so you don't step in those things. All right? I am committed to being here for this class, except for the ones that I've already had engagements on. And I expect that you guys will be here too. So a couple of other rules of engagement. These guys right here. My preference is that you would turn them off when you show up. Now, if you want to put them on vibrate, that's fine. But if it's an annoying type of vibrate, then maybe next time just turn off the ringer completely. Okay, so my commitment to you is when you guys are in this classroom and I'm here, I'm going to give you an hour and 15 minutes of my time. And this is what it won't look like. Oh, hang on, i got to go. Yeah, what's up? I'm not doing anything. Nothing important, no. What are you up to? That's super rude, just so you know. Okay? So I'm not going to answer mine. I'm hoping that you won't answer yours either. Same thing goes for texting. Okay? It may not be distracting to you, and you think that it's not distracting to me, uh, but it could be distracting the person around you. And so if someone else comes up to you and says, hey, do you mind not texting right now? I'm, it's hard, I'm, I'm having a tough time concentrating. Because for some reason, when people are out on their devices, everyone's eyes go like, you know, what are they doing? Shopping on Amazon, okay, watching Netflix. If it's that, if your life is that important to you, then maybe you shouldn't come to class. Okay? Now, if it's an emergency, I get it. And if you need to quietly slip out um, because it's an emergency, understood. And I would reserve that right, too, if something, you know, massive came up. But if you're having an emergency, you know, every week, then again, maybe, maybe you need to reevaluate your schedule and your commitments. You, you might be overly committed if you're emergency every week. Okay? Cool? Um, a couple of other things. How the class works. Here's the point totals. There's a question uh, towards the front of the room about what the connect is for. So you can see it here. We have four exams and one final, and you keep all the exams. We don't drop any exams. Okay? This is a class that's moving you into upper division courses. Okay, so dropping exams is not something that's all that common once you get out of your 100 level courses. Okay? Besides, I've spent a lot of energy writing these exams. You'd be surprised uh, how much time it takes to write an actual good exam. If you want to write a crappy one, you can throw it out fast. But to write a quality exam it takes a lot of energy. Okay, so I don't want any of them to be blown off. I want you guys to take them all seriously. But the whole point is to get you ready for the exams. That's what the lectures are for. That's why you need to show up. So there's 100 points total. All the exams are cumulative. We'll talk about how much cumulative material shows up on each exam. The last exam is the final, but it's more like a fifth exam than a true cumulative final. 
there will be new material on the final, uh, as well as cumulative material. There will be five online quizzes, and there will be five online worksheets. Now here, we will drop the lowest one, because I do understand that life gets busy, and you might space one of the assignments. Or you might just have a really bad week. Okay? You went out of town, you couldn't get back, you had car trouble, you missed the assignment. So there are some freebies on the homework, but not on the exams. So 660 total points. Now the grading scale is shown here as being essentially a straight scale with standard mathematical rounding. And you can talk to folks that have taken the class. I stick to this. To the, to the number, okay? Um, so an 89.5% is what? Okay. And what's an 89.49? Okay? All day, every day. We have to draw a line somewhere, guys. So there won't be any funky curve at the end of the semester. I feel like, in my opinion, and it's just my opinion, but actually my opinion does matter in this situation, because right? Run the class. Um, this is the fairest way to do it. Because if you know what's expected of you from day one, which is today, you know exactly where you need to be at the end of the semester in order to earn the grade that you want. Did you catch the word that I used? You're going to earn the grade that you want. I don't give out any grades. Okay? I, I read a student like, oh, you gave me a B. I didn't give you anything. You earned points that fell on the scale that were equivalent to a B. Okay? My responsibility is to give you the tools in order for you to be successful to earn the grade that you wanted to earn. And so that's what we're doing today. We're setting some of the groundwork on what is the expectation. I will commit to you that I will be present and prepared every lecture. Okay? You already know when I've, I've already committed to other things before the semester even started. Now, there could be urgent things that show up, and, and you know, and I, who knows how that's going to look. It's supposed to be an El Nino year, so there might be huge snow, and I have to leave suddenly to go chase it. But, um, no, that won't happen, because usually the second semester is going to be snow. So you guys are in good shape. But there may be some urgent things that do show up, but other than that, I will commit uh, to providing you with SI resources, the lecture material that's organized, the lectures that we're prepared for, okay, a learning environment with no distractions or as minimal distractions as possible, okay, and that's sort of our professional contract. And so I'm going to try to treat you guys with that respect, and I would ask you to do the same to me. Here's where the showing up to class makes sense. So there could be up to four in-class assignments. That might mean that we have one assignment that's bonus, or two, or three, or we could have four. That would still be up to four. But after we've had four, the fifth one would fall out of this bold underline, right? And so we won't have a fifth one. It could be uh, we're up to a total of 40 points. So we won't have more than 40 bonus points. And the bonus points will only be available for students that come to class. There won't be any makeups. So, and I'm not going to announce it like, show up Thursday, it could be a bonus, right? It's not going to be like fifth grade. The bonus will be kind of when we decide to do it, and if you're here, you get them. If you're not, you miss out. But if you don't do any bonus points, it doesn't mess up your scale. It only helps you with the whoopses on the exams. Okay? So I don't drop an exam, but you could have in this class 30 or 40 bonus points. In my opinion, that's superior than dropping an exam. Okay? For a couple of reasons. Pedagogically, fancy word for teaching, you didn't skip any material. You were exposed to everything. You might have done poorly on one exam, and the bonus points kind of pulled you out of that abyss. But it wasn't that you just had a freebie and you were able to skip out. When you get to 202, you won't have you know, that situation of, well, I, I, I dropped that exam because I was doing so well, so I didn't even cover that material. You've at least been exposed to it, so it's in your brain somewhere. So attendance is not mandatory, but it's highly encouraged, and it will be rewarded with these bonus points. 
Um, there aren't any makeups unless you have an institutional excuse. I know I have student athletes in here. Uh, you guys have an impressive commitment that you have to maintain. Um, and I, I'm always amazed at how well the student athletes can do uh, with their athletic um, responsibilities as well as their academic responsibilities. So if you're an athlete or if you have other clubs that you're involved in and you have institutional excuses, we'll make accommodations for that. Okay? But if you just didn't feel like coming to the exam on the 15th of September, that, that's not an institutional excuse. Okay? The institution of me said I should stay home that day. Doesn't count. Okay? <laughs> All right, let's talk about trick questions. I don't intentionally write any trick questions. Now, could there be a bad question? Absolutely. Because I'm human. I make mistakes. So the way that I like to handle this is if you want to challenge a question on any of the homeworks or on the exams, I want to encourage you to do that. But just because you think it was a stupid question or dumb or lame, okay, or you didn't really cover it, um, well, actually, if I didn't cover it, that's legit. Um, if I didn't cover it well, that's a different story. Okay? Those don't necessarily count as trick questions. If it's flat out wrong, then I want to know about it for a couple of reasons. I want to actually make sure I make it right. I don't want to make that same mistake again. And if I'm wrong about something and I'm teaching something wrong, um, I would like to actually be corrected. Maybe there's new information out there that just came out in 2015 that I didn't know about. And you guys do. Okay, so there's an opportunity for us to engage. And then there's an other benefit to this category. All right, how many of you are going to be physicians if everything goes well? Okay, so I'm going to pick on a couple of you. You're right here. What's your name? Sarah. Sarah. And let me see somebody in the back. Yes, sir. What's your name? Marcus. Marcus and Sarah. Can you guys turn, turn, stand up and look at each other for a second so we can... Have professional eye contact. Marcus in the back, Sarah up front. Okay, both are, uh, it's Dr. Sarah to you all, and Dr. Marcus. Um, and let's pretend that you guys both have an eight year old patient. And it was yours this morning, and now you're handing it over to Marcus, Dr. Marcus. Do you think that the two of you are going to agree on everything all the time? No. You can, if you don't know if I just looked at it? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Marcus? No, no. Now, who's going to be a stay, stay stand? Who's going to be a nurse? Everything works out. Nurse uh, over here in the orange. Stand up for me and tell us your name. Angel. Angel. Nurse Angel. And how about a PA, physician's assistant, right here? What's your name? Emerald. What's that? Emerald. Emerald. Emerald's our PA. Okay. And let's do a uh, pulmonary tech. All right, someone who wants to play a pulmonary text, since this is drama 101. Right here. So. <laughs> Our pulmonary tech is named? Fritz. Fritz. Okay. So now this eight-year-old patient has a pulmonary embolism, and you think that all five of you are going to agree on every course of action that you plan to take. What do you guys think? What does the audience think? No. So how are you going to talk to each other about your disagreements? Professional, right? Are you going to say, is Emerald going to say to Mark, that was, that's stupid, of course not. Of course not. Yeah, you might think it, of course. Okay. But there's a filter. Okay. Okay. Let's give a round of applause. So, the point is, you might think that I am dumb, and that was a stupid question, but I really don't want you to say it that way. I want to encourage you to practice professional criticism. Why was it unfair? What was wrong about it? And I'm going to push back. And I'm going to try to push back in a diplomatic way to encourage you to learn more. Which is, all right, well, go find the answer for me. And I may even point you to the primary literature. I want you to find me a paper that proves your point. And if you do, I'll give you back the points. Now, here's what's going to happen at the end. One is either uh, you're going to discover that I'm right and you're wrong. Fine. I'm going to discover that you're right and I'm wrong. Also fine. And you get awarded the points. But whether you get the points or not, you practice this eight-year-old pulmonary embolism scenario.
how to challenge each other, because unless you practice it, you're not going to get good at it. Okay? But I want this to be respectful. That can also come in an email. And you'd be surprised at how bold people are in emails. They will say things in an email that they would never otherwise say in person. Okay? So an email is a fine way to challenge a question. But again, put on that professional hat. Maybe save a draft of it. Reread it. Maybe have a friend read it and say, I'm sending this to Dr. Killer. What do you think? You sound like a moron, dude. <laughs> Or, that sounds so sweet. You got it, man. Okay, fine. Maybe sleep on it. Send it the next day. Okay? Because we don't do that enough, folks. We just fire out information back and forth, and we never really filter it, and it gets us into a lot of difficult water, myself included. Okay? All right, so that's that. So that's how you do challenging the uh, fair, uh, unfair questions that you think. we got to talk about some academic dishonesty. This is a requirement. For me to point these things out to you. We take it extremely seriously. So plagiarism would be passing somebody's off, off, somebody else's work off as your own. Okay? We don't have a lot of assignments that you're going to turn in in this class, but having somebody write down their answers to the Connect assignment and handing it to you, and then you go uh, do the Connect assignment, that would be considered plagiarism. Cheating on the exams in this classroom? Yes, there's 400 of you, and there's only four of us. We'll have more proctors in here. Can we keep an eye on everybody all the time? Of course not. That's why we have cameras everywhere. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, and lasers, no. Um, we can't do that, but you guys need to know if, if you're caught in these arenas, the department, the bio department, the dean, um, and the university take them extremely seriously. And more importantly, you should too. So if you think back to that little scenario that we just played out, what kind of pulmonary tech are you going to be? What kind of physician are you going to be? What kind of nurse or PA? And so if you don't practice those types of ethical decision making now, you're never going to live them out in the future. Right? Your true, the saying is, your true character is how you behave when nobody's watching. So in a class of 400, it almost feels like you can be anonymous and nobody's actually watching. So how you behave is what your true character really is. So I really put it on you guys. Okay, We're going to do everything that we're supposed to do, but you need to internally ask yourself, okay, how is it that I'm going to behave in this classroom? is probably going to translate into the type of physician or scientist that I'm going to be. All right? Uh, let's see. And then uh, we need to read through every single one of these statements. Are you ready? Yes. I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is more information. Again, this is the requirement in you know, the minus 25 font. Um, so you can't really read it. But it's got to be on the syllabus, so it's there. And uh, there's you know, all sorts of great contact. These people... Nobody uses faxes anymore, but in case you decide you want to uh, go to the junkyard and buy a fax machine, you can fax <laughs> over here. Uh, so that's awesome, you know, that, that there's faxing still available to us. Okay? Any questions on that? So far, so good. Question? Um, did you learn, does it say um, where, like, does it say when our assignments and quizzes are due? Yes. You just reminded me that I need to go there. Okay, so this is, the question is on BB Learn, does it tell you when the assignments are? We will announce it in class. Okay, and I also probably make BB Learn announcement that pushes to your device before the first one comes due so you don't forget. But if you want to know, like, okay, I don't remember where the SI, when the SI times are, then you need to go look them up. Um, I don't remember what we're talking, when the first exam is, then go, go to the course syllabus. So where do you find all that? This is in BB Learn. And you'll see that um, this was the first announcement that I sent out on Monday. It's its first lecture tomorrow, Tuesday, in Klein Library Room 102 at 220. Okay? So if you didn't get the announcement, you will actually be able to see the announcement right here. You can click on more announcements. And there are some old relic types of announcements that I've left in here just because I thought they were actually um, somewhat of value still. 
like for example how to print the lecture slides. Right? So there's a you know there's some instructions on how to print them. So you don't have to burn too much paper. You can print them, you know, multiple slides per page. You can print them front and back if you wanted to. What students have found to be the best way to study for this class is to actually print out the lectures and take their notes right on the lectures. Okay? Um, if you don't want to do it that way, that's totally up to you. Um, but I'm just telling you, I'm sharing with you what people have found to be the best. Um, there, you can see where the video recordings are. You can uh, click right here and it'll take you right to my YouTube page where you can actually download the video recordings. If you go there now, you'll be like, how come everything sounds so old? Because it was from spring right now. I haven't deleted the old ones. Um, let's see. So you're going to see some action potential videos, some dendritic cell uh, images. I left all these. Everybody needs to know why childbirth is so painful. Uh, <laughs> meningitis. Everybody needs to know about meningitis and uh, skin guns. I mean, and you know, the, the difference between a male and female pe pelvis. I mean, this is just really important information that I just couldn't delete. So that's all still there. Okay. <clears throat> if you come here, oh, let me do this. This is in edit mode. So this is the way you're going to see it. Here's the course syllabus. You can click on there and that's the PDF. That's going to show you all the dates that we just walked through. It'll show you when the exams are. So you can plan, you know, you can tell mom and dad, hey, I'm going to be home for Thanksgiving, but I can't fly out until Wednesday morning. Okay? And you're, you're like, well, I have another final for a different class Wednesday morning. I don't care about that class. I just care about my class. So fly out Wednesday morning. Okay? Just don't miss my final. Okay? <laughs> Here's all the lectures. PDF format, I do lecture in PowerPoint, but the reason it's PDF because they're big files. So if I have 400 of you downloading a lecture file and it's in a PowerPoint, then we might crash the World Wide Web. <laughs> okay? So these are all the lectures for the entire semester. So they're already there. Um, here's the Connect worksheets and quizzes. So you click on this folder. You're going to see there's the two that I just talked about and their due dates. Now, if you click, oh, I don't even know what's going to happen because this isn't my computer. Let's find out. Let's click here. It should take you to connect. It'll probably ask you to log in. Oh, no. Look, it took you right to, oh, uh, this is my, it already, oh, wow, I knew it was me. That's kind of screwy. Oh, look at you overachievers. Look at this. There's 30, 30 one of you. I'm so proud of you guys. You full brown nosers. That's awesome. Because <laughs> I could click on that and find out who you are. I could. Should we do that right now? No, obviously. <laughs> so 39 of you have already started. Good for you. Look at that. Nice job, Charlie Brown. All right. So this is where this is. When you click on it, it won't take you to, to my uh, screen that shows me all this information. It'll take you to your own shell, and then you can find the assignments and track your progress. Okay? Remember, you have, I think, a two-week free trial if you haven't gotten anything yet. Gives you a little time to uh, make a cardboard sign and find the right street corner. <laughs> well, I'm going to say enjoy it. I hear it's very lucrative. All right, answers your question on BB Learn. Any other questions before we get going? So what I want to talk about now is I want to talk about, we're, we're shifting gears a little bit. And um, one of the things I want to shift to is why we set the class up the way we did. It was somewhat intentional. That means that it's somewhat accidental. Here's the typical class format of how students tend to get ready for class, right? Now it's a protein burger, so there's no, there's no bread. But um, other than that, nothing's changed. And the first time you see stuff is here. And if you have sort of a lousy lecture, you might have gotten a great hour and 15 minute nap. That's about it, OK? And then you walk away, and you start working on assignments, and you're just completely lost. And then when you get ready for the exam, you just fail miserably. Because you see, 
questions on there and the way that it's worded, it doesn't make any sense to you. And we've seen and we measure this, and when we measure these metrics, we see what the numbers are, and we know that we have to do something about it. And so we did. So we modified this class, and I've done this with all my classes, and I actually think it's gone really, really well. In fact, the laboratory is modified in this way as well. And you're going you're to learn about that if you haven't already done so. Now, the modification took place years ago, as did this class. But student scores have been going up over semester to semester. Now, we're getting better at it, but students are also performing and more familiar with it because of the way that your lives are. Your lives are more of a constant feed of information. That's how you guys are. That's how it works. You're constantly getting information pushed to you or pulled all day long. And so we're just playing into that strategy. Is we want you to have an exposure to the material before you show up. So my expectation is that you're going to read the chapter, whether it's an ebook, sixth edition, or seventh edition, and you should know exactly what it is because I've already told you what we're going to lecture on. It's on the syllabus. And do you have to read it word for word? No. What I would do is I would look at the lecture notes first, the slides. And I'd walk through the slides and I would see if I could figure out what each slide was going to talk about. And the ones that I was super, super curious about or had questions about, I would go read those segments in the, in, in the lecture, uh, in the um, textbook. We're not going to be able to cover everything in the textbook. In fact, there's going to be stuff that's not in the textbook that only we will cover in lecture. Because when textbooks are written, they're already outdated. The information that's in a textbook was information that was current probably a couple of years ago. Okay? So we'll talk about some new, like the skin gun that you saw. Okay? We'll talk about you know, meningitis in the news. And well, you, know, you saw some of those little tidbits. We'll try to talk about things that are actually relevant right now, not just in a textbook. But the textbook is a huge resource to you to become familiar with what it is that we're going to talk about. So when you come to class, you actually do have questions. And hopefully we get these questions answered as we walk through the material. If I'm talking about gluconeogenesis, or if I'm talking about osteoporosis, or if I'm talking about angiogenesis in class, these are really expensive words that if you knew the definition of, your parents would think that the tuition that they're paying is so worth it. Okay? <laughs> So you should write it down okay, and call them and say, hey, Mom, I learned a new word today. Okay? When I say those words, you're not fumbling your nose. I, I, I'm totally, I don't even know what he's talking about. You've already heard the language. So this class is almost as if you're taking a foreign language because much of it is in Latin. How many of you are fluent in Latin? How many of you know a little bit of Latin? A couple of people, right? My daughter's starting Latin in seventh grade this year. I'm pretty excited. Okay. But I have a feeling all the words she's going to learn are not the words that I know. Okay, So most of us don't know Latin proficiently. And so we're all going to be struggling in the same way to learn some of these new big words. Okay, But the idea is when you come to class, it's not the first time you've heard the word. You actually will end up with a better comprehension of what's going on. So this semester, what we're going to do is we're going to incorporate a number of different learning modalities. We're going to do these online worksheets and quizzes. I'm encouraging you, if I could force you to do it, I would try, but I can't force you to read. Okay? But if you do, I guarantee you, when you come to class, the lecture will make more sense. Because you have already heard it one time. And I will be reinforcing it for the second time. And then you go do the connect assignment. And those connect assignments, you can start now. 31 of you are already started. And you can get started, hit save, and exit out. And come back in. And you have an unlimited amount of time up until the due date to actually go in and out of the assignment and then complete it. And if you forget, because... You were studying at 11.59 p.m. on Friday night. And you forget to hit submit. It's already set up to automatically submit for you. 
Okay? So you just need to work on it periodically. Maybe answer the ones that you know. Find the ones you don't know. Go look up the answer. Come back. And your learning is going to go like this. It will incrementally grow. And that's what we want. The idea of cramming the night before the exam, the data shows it doesn't work. Okay, so as much as I can do to encourage you to study a little bit every day, at least a little bit multiple times per week, is going to in, uh, increase your performance on those exams. We'll do a traditional lecture. Okay, this isn't some you know kooky, hybrid, blended you know, swirly class or you know it's online with a bunch of touchy feely you know assignments. We all get together in groups and learn. we're not doing. We're going to use the things that are valuable, and I'm going to deliver a regular lecture. Okay, that's that's what I'm paid to do. Okay, so I'm not trying to weasel out of lecturing. I'm going to deliver a regular lecture every time we're together. And today's going to be super short because we had to get through all this stuff. And then we'll do some in class activities, but you, you know we're not going to be like, all right, I want. Um, uh, you get in groups of four, so a uh, hundred groups of four, okay, <laughs> it's not going to work. Okay, so we will do some group activities that make sense for a, a room of 400. Um, the group collaboration and the peer interaction are study groups. So, I would encourage you also to form study groups. Because the, the research also demonstrates if you can teach it to somebody, that means that you probably understand it pretty well. Or you're just a really good faker. Okay? Both will go far in life. Okay? <laughs> so if you can't fake it really well, you better learn it. Okay? So study groups are going to be a key to success. Now, here's a question for you. How much time do you need to study each week? How much time do you need to study each week? <laughs> to him. Nine? How'd you get nine? <coughs> three times two plus three? Made that up. I'm good. Three times three? Anybody else have another metric? Three credit hours equals how many hours per week of study time, which is your total? Time of studying, what is it? What's the end? Nine? Six? Six? How many of you guys like six? It's less than nine. How many of you guys like nine? 31 of you like 12, because that's the way you're wired. Right? You already started the assignment. Well, the reality is yes, yes, and yes. It's going to depend on how you learn. It might depend on how many times you take in this class. Okay? It might depend on how many times you want to take this class. So, I would figure it out earlier than later, is how much time do I need to set aside each week? Because you're going to have to set aside time each week to study. Alright, first in-class activity. Pair up, so I want pairs of, I want 200 groups of two. Raise that go. Turn to the person next to you. One of you define anatomy, the other define physiology.
person A who wants to give us, start us out with what is anatomy? Physical structures within a body, like bones, tissues, etc. Physical structures within a body. That's pretty good. I like that. Physical structures. Anything else? That's it? You're going with that? Answer A. <laughs> Sir? They study the organ systems and how they interact with the body. They study the organ systems. Okay. The way they interact, I would leave out because that's more physiology. Okay. So the study of the organ, is, or, organ systems, maybe how they're structured or how they're organized. What else? That's only A and B. There could be an all of the above, and that means I have to have other options. What else can I put down on the exam? For uh, anatomy. Anatomy. So keywords are structure. Organ systems, organization, okay, architecture. I said it's a lot of Latin. This one's actually from the Greek. Um, anatomy in Greek, from the Greek, means to separate or to cut up. Okay, so it's talking about the structure or the organization. Now, physiology. What's physiology? The way the physical structures work, how they interact, is this gentleman's. He couldn't resist. He had to give the whole definition. It's the function to the form. Okay, that sounds very textbook. Okay. So physiology is the function, how it works. What does it do? How does it interact with the other systems? Physiology is the study of function. So if you look at the structure, we begin to categorize, and you're going to see in this class that we do lots of categorizations. And we organize the body into these different systems. And the reason that we do that is because it's easier for us. The body doesn't care if you say, oh, that's part of the cardiovascular system, or that's part of the uh, integumentary system, the skin, or that's part of the renal or urinary system. The body interacts all as a single unit. But when we study things as scientists and as clinicians, we need to actually look at putting buckets or labels on things that make sense. So you can see here, we can organize it from simple to complex or from complex to simple. And you can see on this scale, the organism is the most complex and at the atomic level is the least complex or the most simple. And we can stack the system upwards or downwards. And the thing that's kind of cool about this class is we like to operate from organism to the system to the organ to the tissue and maybe in some cases down to the cellular level. In other prerequisite classes, you looked at the organelle. You looked at the macromolecule. You looked at the molecular level as well as the atom. And we're going to build on that, but that's not where we spend a lot of our time. But the thing that's so neat about this class, in my opinion, is I actually get to put into practice for you things that actually connect a lot of the dots of some of the prerequisites that you've already had. And that's actually kind of cool. Because a lot of students take these prereqs and say, well, I don't understand this, I'm not interested in plants, or I'm not interested in this or that. I just want to be a surgeon and slice and dice, baby. Okay. Well, you get, before you start slicing and dicing, you've got to be able to know what you're cutting, how it's going to work. So, you know, just pull back, okay? We'll get you some safety, safety scissors first. Okay, little plastic ones that my kids have. And, uh, but let's get you to the point where you're proficient enough to be a surgeon. So what I want you to do is I want you to try to write down an example in your notes for each of the following items on this list.
Get through as many of them as you possibly can. It's like a self pretest. down the petitions organs, <clears throat> organ systems, see if you can stay within the same part of the body. If you can, that's fine. <coughs> the next thing I want you to do after you finish that is I want you to identify, put an asterisk next to the um, example where life begins. And we're going to talk about the purpose of life in a minute, Where does life begin? How are you guys doing? Who's still working? Very good. All right, I'll see you Thursday. <laughs>